Today, my class presentation is on evolution. Don't you mean evolution? Well, besides the valid concept of microevolution, the concept of macroevolution is evil. Whoa, steady, Tiger. Evolution is evil? So according to the creationist video, the biology departments of Harvard, Cambridge, Stanford, Berkeley, MIT, etc. are all evil. Yeah, right. Microevolution is why there's variation within a species. For example, there are different breeds of dogs due to adaptation and natural selection, but they're all dogs. Isn't that just evolution? Macroevolution is a stretch of the imagination. It requires that a species must take extra genetic information. So dinosaurs becoming birds, apes becoming humans, can't happen. Let's see, microevolution. That would be natural selection of DNA expressed as organisms that reproduce with variation below the species level. The only difference between microevolution and macroevolution is time scale. Just like the only difference between a micro walk, say for instance going to put the kettle on, and a macro walk, say for instance walking to the North Pole, is time scale. The mechanism is exactly the same. It is simply not possible to say you believe in microevolution, but not macroevolution. This would be like saying I believe it's possible to walk to the kitchen, but to walk to the mall would be impossible. Well, maybe that goes some way to explaining our fat creationist friend here. Adaptation can only work for genetic information that's already there. It can't make anything new. Ooh, adaption can only work with genetic material that's already there. Well, meet the organism with the most genetic material, the amoeba. Its genome is 100 times larger than the human genome. So according to the creationists, this organism could microevolve into any other, and they wouldn't have any problems with that, simply as it has the most genetic information that's already there. So dinosaurs becoming birds, apes becoming humans, can't happen. Apes becoming humans can't happen. Well, evidently it did, as besides sharing almost all of our genome with a chimp, we also share endogenal retroviral fragments at identical insertion points in our genome. That's a slam dunk for common ancestry. Further, our chromosome 2 is a fusion of two great ape chromosomes. Again, another slam dunk for common ancestry. For the creationist proposal, there are two kinds of evolution, one they believe in, one they don't. To be true, you would need two kinds of DNA, those that are specific to the kind of animal, like the dogs the creationist mentions, and these would be impervious to mutations, frame shift, gene duplication, etc. And these would be responsible for preventing the kind of evolution that the creationists don't accept, and those that are susceptible to gene duplication, frame shift, single site mutations, etc., that cause the kind of evolution the creationists accept. Regrettably, there are no two such kinds of DNA. All portions of the genome are more or less equally likely to suffer a mutation. However, the selective pressure of those mutations on the organisms that are an expression of that DNA are not equal. However, given what we know about DNA, there are no limits to the amount of change with time that this process can affect on the genome. There is no boundary between microevolution and macroevolution other than time scale. Macroevolution is simply a lot of microevolution. They are caused by the same process. So you're saying we've all been brainwashed? You know, there was a time in society when scientists actually concurred with scripture. Yeah, that's right, fatso. This time was known as the Dark Ages, when slave ownership and burning witches, as commanded by scripture, was seen as a good thing. However, those of us who have stood in the light have a little desire to let you lead us back into the darkness. If you believe in macroevolution, then you also believe we evolved from a rock. Yeah, that's right. Evolution says we evolved from a rock in the same way that Christianity says the universe was created in a battle between space mushrooms and time ninjas. However, more ironic is saying that we came from rocks is cuttingly close to what the Bible literalists believe. You know, God made Adam from dirt and Eve from a dirty rib. It's funny how you believe the most ridiculous concepts of creation just as long as you're not accountable for your actions. Not accountable? However, those of us who are sane believe in civilization, where you are part of a society. Part of your interaction with that society is you are accountable for your actions. 
As such, if you decide to buy some crystal meth and get a massage from a gay prostitute on your way to preach at your mega church how you think homosexuality is an abomination to God, then people will see you as a bigoted hypocrite. Similarly, you are accountable for your actions if you think that molesting children who have been charged to your care is an appropriate course of action. We live in a civilization where you are accountable for your actions, and saying you believe in Zeus, Buddha, Allah, God, Thor, or even evolution does not relieve you of that accountability. Dude, if we did evolve from apes, there would be an overabundance of fossilized evidence of transitional forms of species. So far, zilch. Yeah, zilch. Apart from these. And these. So all these religions, the Buddhist, the Muslim, the Hindu, they're all going to hell. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Okay, here's a coincidence for you. Almost every religion in the world is based on works. Christianity is grace through faith, no works, period. And this is a selling point why? So Christianity is not based on works, according to this video. So in summary, Hitler, who gassed six million Jews, would go to heaven if he truly accepted Jesus before he died. As it's accepting Jesus that counts and works are irrelevant and unimportant for Christianity and Christianity alone, according to this creationist video anyway. And while a Jew who lived a selfless, virtuous, honorable, generous life before getting gassed by Hitler would go to hell because he didn't accept Jesus, as would all the children who die under the age of about five. The reason that virtually all religions are based on works is simply it makes your religion socially unacceptable not to. I mean, according to this creationist Christianity, you have an incentive to live an antisocial, self-centered, and immoral life, and then just before you die, accept Jesus. But then again, I guess this is the sort of morality you would expect from the biblical God, who kills every baby on earth during the flood. Yep, given omnipotence and omnipresence, the best solution the biblical God can come up with involves global infanticide. Incidentally, this is also the God of the Jews and the Muslims, the baby-killing God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Nah, I really don't care what you say. I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, you can do what you want to do, but uh, you're going to die. 150,000 people do it every day. You could be one of them. You're going to bet on that cold shoulder of pride that you're not going to be judged? All right, smart guy. You seem to have all the answers. What do I got to do? Swallow your pride. Drop your doubt. Unharden your heart. Repent of your sins. Turn away from your sins. Not just go to a priest every week and confess. And trust in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. It's as simple as that. Remember, God does not want you in hell. But Jesus himself said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I strongly urge you to think about that before making the biggest mistake in your eternal existence. Ah, the snake oil merchant peddling the promise of eternal life to the short-sighted neurotic mortals who can be seduced by the vacuous promise of eternal life. Eternal life would be no gift, but arguably one of the most horrific tortures that could be laid on a sentient being. I mean, sure, the first million years might be fun, but what about the next million, and the billion after that, and the trillion after that, and you still have eternity left? This is never going to end. There will never be an end in sight. Eternal life is merely the poorly thought-out fiction of mortals who have gotten greedy. Eternal life would be a curse. Without death, there is no reason to do things. Eternal life would rob you of purpose. And this is how things would remain for eternity, and eternity after that, and eternity after that. I strongly urge you to accept your mortality. Do not let your fear of your inevitable death make you waste your only mortal life pursuing phantasms and delusions. Look at yourself in the mirror. For billions of years, those particles which are currently looking back at you have circulated in the universe. But for a brief moment they have coalesced in you. Rejoice in the impressive instant until they dissipate whence they came. Delight that you are a spark of life in the universe. Life is so much more vibrant and vivid without Bronze Age paranoid superstitions that cloud and contract the mind with some empty and undesirable promise that sparks can burn forever. Our time is finite. This gives our lives meaning. 
This gives our lives purpose. This gives our lives urgency. Live life today. Savor it.